Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. Today I'm making a video that I've put off for way too long. I've had so many comments from you guys asking for recommendations on different book glue you can use. So today I'm going through all of my favorite glue that I like to use for my book projects. I will also show you some substitutes you can try in case you don't have these types of glues and also go through some that I don't recommend trying at all. This is going to be a full nerd out session on glue, so be prepared. And I will also include all of the links to the glues I mentioned in the video description below, as well as links to the projects that I reference in this video. When it comes to glue on your book projects, there's glue that you can buy and there's also glue that you can make. And some bookbinders make their own glue paste and that's totally cool, but I am not one of them. I prefer the convenience of buying glue but it's totally up to your preference and if you'd like to try out making your own glue I'll put a helpful link in the description below there are so many different brands and lines of glue out there I haven't had a chance to try all of them and the ones that I show you in this video are what has worked for me over the years but if you have tried anything that has worked for your book projects, I would love to know about it in the comments and go ahead and share your experience down there. There are a few key factors that I look for when choosing a glue for my book projects. The first one is that it should be non-toxic. Books are just meant to be in your hands and I don't wanna put something in my hands that I'm always using and touching that is full of a toxic chemical. If the label on the glue says, poisonous or may cause irritation to your skin or uh, known to cause cancer in the state of California. Um, I just don't think that's something that is good inside of a book. The next thing I look for is if it's archival safe or acid free. Usually those kind of mean the same thing. If it's acid free, it shouldn't yellow your paper or discolor it. Therefore, it's archival safe because the book is going to last longer. The next thing I look for is if the glue dries clear and this isn't such a big deal, but if the glue gets on your cover or just on the decorative part, if it dries clear, then you're less likely to notice the glue when it's dry. You're less likely to notice any mistakes. And if it dries clear, it's not going to discolor any of the material you used in your book. And a big thing I look for is if it dries flexible. This isn't as important on the covers where you just want something to dry flat but it is important on the spine of your book. You want the glue that is on the spine of your text block to be flexible because it opens easier, it allows the book to lay flat easier, which makes it easier to use and easier to write in and sketch in. Next, I'm going to briefly go over some of the glue brushes that I like to use. I prefer to use a thick kind of coarse bristle brush but I like to keep it inexpensive because sometimes I change them out a lot, depending if I get a little lazy on washing them off. I know there's some book glue brushes for sale that are round, but I prefer the flat tip because I can be a little bit more neat with the glue application on the book. These synthetic brushes came in a pack. I got them from Michaels and they seem to work pretty well. They were pretty inexpensive. They came in three sizes, but I usually just use the smaller one. But if I'm making a larger book, I sometimes use the larger brush so I can cover more surface with glue. And I usually like to have more than one available because once you use glue on the brush and you want to let your glue dry, you really need to wash your brush right after because the glue dries on the bristles and it's going to ruin your brush if you let it dry. And to wash them off, I just rinse them off with water and then lay it flat to dry, usually outside because it dries faster. Just a little tip, if you let your brush dry like this vertically, you're letting the water go into the metal part which can cause rust on your bristles and it doesn't dry out as quickly. So I recommend letting your brush dry horizontally or even a little down this way so that the water can dry out. Okay, now let's get into my top favorite book glues. My number one go-to is Neutral pH Adhesive from Lineco, commonly referred to as PVA. And they also make another glue that is basically the same stuff as this, but it's in a different line, which they call Books by Hand. In case you don't know, PVA stands for Polyvinyl Acetate, 
and that's a really good glue to use in your book projects. It's a really thick white glue that dries clear. It remains flexible and it says on the label that it has excellent lay flat properties. It's archival quality. It may be more on the pricier side, but it's definitely the best glue to use in my opinion. You've seen me use it in most of my book projects, especially when I'm making case bound books. It's great glue for the text block and your covers. Unfortunately, I don't think a lot of the art store chains carry this type of glue, let alone a lot of the line code products. I know Blick does and I can always find it online. My next favorite glue to use is this acid-free glue made by Helmer. It's acid-free, neutral pH. They call it book glue. It's made for books, it dries clear, it's non-toxic, it has a flexible bond, and it will not yellow. It's a thick glue. It's very similar to the PVA that I like to use. I like to use it on the spine of text blocks and the covers of books. I've only seen this for sale in Hobby Lobby and online, but maybe the other stores will carry it eventually. Uh, let me know if you've seen it at any other stores. The next one, I haven't really used it in a while. It's Perfect Paper Adhesive made by US Art Quest. This isn't PVA, but it is acrylic based, which I'm not sure how that differs, but I do know that it is a little bit of a watery consistency. So it's not as thick as your regular book glue or PVA, but it does perform very similar. It's archival safe, made for paper, UV resistant, and it dries transparent to a matte finish, and it also dries flexible. I did make a test text block for you guys. This is just perfect bound, which means it's single sheets glued together. I don't think you can see this, but I think it dries with a kind of blue tint on the paper, but you can't really see it when it dries. That might be the UV resistant chemical they put inside of it. It's a little less expensive than the glues that I just showed you. I used to use it a lot in design school on my projects because at the time it was less expensive. And as a college student, you're always trying to save money. At the time, I think I got it from Michael's Craft Store. I don't know if they still carry it, but you can definitely find it online. My next top favorite glue is the Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength Glue Stick. You can't use this on the spine of your text block. It's more for the covers. And the reason I really like it is because it's a good alternative to a wet glue. So when you're gluing your end pages to your covers or gluing any paper to your cover board, it dries faster and it won't warp as much because it's not really water-based. However, I only use it for projects that are around this size and this size. If your project is any larger than this, it will dry way too fast, so you're not even able to get your paper or material on your board because it will be dry by the time you're done applying it. So if you have a bigger project, I recommend using the PVA type of glue, but if you're looking to minimize wrinkling or warping of your paper, try this out on your cover material or end pages. However, if you are using vinyl or a really thick material on your cover, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it definitely does work on paper. And you can usually find it at any art or craft store. I've seen a lot of your comments asking about uh, how long it should take for glue to dry. And it just really depends on where you live. I live in a really dry climate, a desert, so things dry really fast here. I usually wait about a half hour or so between doing second coats of wet glue. If you live by the ocean or you have more humid weather, uh, things are going to take a lot longer to dry. Just to be safe, I usually let mine dry completely for about a day or eight hours or overnight just to let everything set. I've also seen some comments that ask about how to glue vinyl or fabric, and I have a separate tutorial for how to make book cloth, and that's basically paper-backed material. So you can actually make your own. They do sell it if you search book cloth. You can find a lot of material that has paper backing, and that will make it easier for the glue to adhere to your board. And I use Heat and Bond Ultra Hold to make that, and it's just iron-on adhesive, and then I use a piece of paper or tissue paper to make the paper backing. It comes in a large roll like this, or you can buy a smaller folded sheet. And making your material into book cloth will also prevent the wet glue from seeping through the material onto the cover of your book. If you're trying to make a vinyl book cover, I recommend finding vinyl that has a fabric backing because that's a texture that is easier for the adhesive to adhere to. And PVA is usually pretty strong, so 
that will work. It just might take a little bit longer for the two pieces to stick together and dry that way. If you have vinyl that is really hard to work with, you could try putting some weights or clamps on it because sometimes it just needs to really be sandwiched together to stick. And I've also made a soft cover out of vinyl which didn't include any hard board inside of it. And I just ironed the paper straight to the vinyl using the iron-on adhesive like I did in my Harry Potter book. So that's also something you can try if you can't get any glue to stick to the vinyl, you can just turn it into a soft cover. Okay, now I'm going to go into some substitutes that you can use if you can't find any of the glues I just mentioned. Just note, these aren't my favorite, but they do kind of work and I'm kind of on the fence with them. They can work for some of your projects, but they're definitely not my favorite. Nothing against these brands that make these glues. They just aren't as well suited for the book projects, in my opinion. I also made test text blocks for these just to show you what I mean. First up, you guys have asked, can you use Mod Podge? And the answer is yes, but in my opinion, it doesn't perform as well as the PVA that I mentioned. I've been using the Mod Podge paper line, but it does work just the same as the regular Mod Podge. I just thought by getting the paper one, maybe it was better suited for paper projects. If you want to make a text block, it does work with a couple of coats, but I noticed that it kind of yellows the paper. You can see it works, it holds the papers together, and I don't know if you can see this, but it is slightly yellow. It is non-toxic, so it could be fine, but maybe it's not acid-free. I don't know, it doesn't say acid-free on the label. So usually when something is yellowing the paper like that, it means that there's uh, some kind of acidity in it. I don't know, maybe if I got a bad batch or maybe I have an old bottle of the glue or maybe it's just dyed that way, I'm not sure. So it does work, it holds the paper together, it's flexible. That's a key thing is that it is flexible. I'm just kind of on the fence with it because it dries yellow. Some of you have asked, can you use tacky glue? And you can, but it's not my favorite for book projects. Works for the covers, but when it comes to the spine of your text block, it dries just a little too stiff, meaning that it's not as flexible as the other glues. I mean, you can see that it works. It does its job by gluing the paper together. Anytime I've experimented with it and tried to make books out of it, the book just would not open as easily and flat but it is non-toxic, it dries clear, it's strong, so it has good things going for it, but when it comes to book projects, I just don't prefer it because of the stiffness. Now to go to the opposite end of the spectrum, this next glue that I tried, I think dries a little bit too flexible. It's the Elmer's Craft Bond fabric and paper glue. I do use the Craft Bond glue stick, which works great for covers. This one might be also great for covers, but not so great for the spine of your text block. It does its job, it holds the pages together, but if you really try to pull on the book, you can see that you can almost tear off the pages if you really try hard, but I mean, you're not really trying to tear apart your book when you're using it, but it is pretty flexible when it dries. So maybe this would work well if you're making a notepad that has pages that are meant to rip off, but maybe that's a good thing if you're looking for your book to lay super flat and bend even further back. If you're thinking of using this for your text block, it can work, just know that it dries really flexible. Next, I will go through some glues that I do not recommend for gluing together a book. Hot glue or a glue gun, I have tried it a long time ago. I experimented with it and it just doesn't work. Yes, it works for other projects, but for gluing a text block together, it's just really goopy and messy. And similar to the tacky glue, it just dries a little too stiff. It makes it a little bit more difficult to open your text block and for your pages to lay flat. Also, it's hard to get an even coat or even coverage on your pages, on your paper. I think some books that are made commercially and from a company, they do use some kind of hot glue to construct the material on their books, but I don't have a machine like that. Maybe if you have something to glue on the top of your cover or some kind of decorative piece, that's totally fine, but when it comes to the construction of your book, I don't recommend it. Next, if you want to use school glue or craft glue, like Elmer's, I've used this in a lot of DIY notepads. It works great for that. But when it comes to constructing an actual book, 
like a full book. It's just, it's not strong enough for a project like this. Another glue I do not recommend using on your book projects is rubber cement. I don't even have a bottle to show you because I can't take that stuff. I can't stand it. It smells so badly and it just doesn't last. Anything I've tried to glue with rubber cement in the past has since fallen apart. It's all yellow and it's all nasty looking so i just don't recommend it e6000 i have used this in projects but not projects that i'm going to touch with my hands coming back to the toxic nature of some glues the first warning on the back of the label is possible cancer agent so is that something you want to put in your book? A book that you're going to carry around and be touching with your hands a lot? And not just E6000, that can apply to any industrial strength glue. There's a lot of different ones out there that have a similar warning on their label. Better suited for different projects, more industrial projects, but not so much a book project. I hope this video answered most of your bookbinding glue questions. And if I missed anything, go ahead and leave it in a comment below and I will do my best to answer your questions. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. And there are more book related videos on the way. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any of them. I am on Patreon now and I wanna give a big shout out to all my patrons who are helping me make content like this that is free to watch on YouTube. And if you are interested in supporting this channel, go ahead and check out my page. I'll put a link around here. You can also find that down below. You can check out more videos on book supplies, substitutes, and tips in the playlist that I made around here. And I will also put that link below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.